So uh, what's the difference between the class section which is just closed in Melbourne last week and your class section? Yeah, well the one that finished last week was a fairly simple one. It was they were overcharging customers and the court found that some of their charges were excessive and some of them were acceptable. Uh, this class action is completely different. It's to do with the conduct of the bank in its lending practices or rather it taking over the lending practices from another bank. So ANZ has purchased a land book uh, from uh, Landmark from Landmark and as they got they discovered they got 9,000 entries in this book and they said okay let's see this book now a little bit closer than we purchased and they somehow assess the land book and say oh we got approximately 4,000 cases in this book which we have to challenge and assess because we don't like that high risks now let's talk to the farmers and offer them some help is it? Well the help was to go around with new contracts saying that you're no longer borrowing money from Landmark, you've got the money, but you actually borrowed it from the ANZ Bank. And, and all these 4,000, approximately 4,000 signed in? No, a lot of them didn't. Some of them became very suspicious, but a number of them signed in because they were basically forced to sign in by threatening that the loans would be called up, that Landmark was out of business, etc, etc, etc. And the peculiarity is those that did sign in uh, the ANZ Bank then uh, revalued the properties and so the loan to value ratio was out of kilter. So say you had a $2 million property yes. and you borrowed $1.5 million, they revalued the property at say $1 million and said hold on, you borrowed more than the property's worth so we have to call up the loan. So a number of cases where people had long term loans, 20 years or so, and um, in some cases it was shortened to as little as three months. They were told you have to pay up. Apart from the fact the farmers didn't have the money, they couldn't refinance because once the ANZ then started legal action against them, no other bank will touch them. Now the peculiarity is those that signed over to the ANZ who hadn't lent them any money at all um, received a writ issued by the ANZ Bank. Others who didn't sign over, they received a writ issued in the name of Permanent Custodians Limited, which says I'm the trustee of Landmark. The whole thing is shrouded in a cloud surrounded by a mystery because no one is coming forward and saying these are the, the, the original documents, these are the trustees, this is how it all worked. It's, it's almost as though Landmark was a shop front to basically basically to tout for business uh, and then the ANZ takes over and it appears that the speed with which the ANZ is calling up these loans and the tactics they're using to heavy hand the farmers, it would indicate to any fair-minded person that the ANZ is less interested in getting the money paid than they want the property. They want the properties. The ANZ Bank has not been fully forthcoming in giving information as to what is going on behind the scenes. Uh, they're relying on uh, a master trust deed, which they say is confidential and can't be seen. In fact, uh, their own legal counsel has said that the, the deed is so confidential, she's not even allowed to see it. But you could have the access for the original documents from the clients, could you? Yes, well, one of the things that we've discovered is some of the loan applications that uh, are being used uh, by the bank are different from the copies that the farmers had that they had originally filled in. In other words, the figures have been doctored to make the loan look more attractive to um, landmark or third party or the investors or whatever. And the other thing that's happened is that it appears that a number of these loans, if not all of them, have been securitised in some way and marketed. What does it mean securitising the loan? It means bundling mortgages together and selling them essentially as bonds, you know, on the on the market. Which is a common practice in the United States of America. Yes, things crashed, these bonds then became worthless and uh, as, uh, uh, as I said yesterday at, uh, at the meeting, 
the, the, the farmers are the ones suffering. They didn't cause the global financial crisis, the bankers did. The argument now is, um, and you could go and ask Mr Hockey this because he's friendly with the banks, money that you deposit with the bank isn't a deposit, you're buying an unsecured note. But I've heard of two cases yes. where someone wanted to take out $5,000 in cash yes. from the bank and the bank said they didn't have $5,000, they'd have to come back next week. And another one, someone wanted to just take out 3000 in cash, the bank wanted an explanation as to why what they... For? Yeah, what for? Why, do, why did they want their own money? So what do you think, John? What's the chance of your class action proposal? Well, it's, it's just in its infancy. There was a, a meeting yesterday. There is a lot of interest uh, uh, in it. And uh, I think that once it gets up and running, it's going to have a very good chance of, of success because the banks will have to explain to the court what they're doing and why, why they're doing it. It's just sad to see people's lives destroyed. And uh, we would just like simple explanation from the bank. Unfortunately, all too often when these questions are raised in court, um, often the courts either don't want to know about it or don't understand it and say things like, well, you borrowed the money from someone you have to and, pay it back. and you've got to pay it back. One of the farmers who was present at the meeting went to court to uh, um, say something you know, to, to the court and uh, he was told uh, by uh, um, the judicial officer hearing the case uh, that he wasn't allowed to speak. He'd had no right to speak. In his own case? In his own case. He owned the farm. He and his wife owned the farm and both of them were denied the right to actually speak. And a decision was made against them and they, they just they lost the property. Have their say. They couldn't even have their say. And what's happened now is the farmers here are at the end of their, of, of their tolerance. Yes. And uh, you're talking about people who are losing their life savings, losing their home, uh, losing their, their, their livelihood. Um, so they are in a terrible situation. Yeah, I mean, I met a man yesterday who had a, a prosperous property. Um, uh, the ANZ moved in. He's now on a pension. They have royal commissions at the drop of a hat in this country. In, in, in all sorts of things. We're going to have one into unionism now and, and, and corruption and so on. Uh, but what we, really, what we really need is a Royal Commission into banking practices. A, a real Royal Commission.